We've yeah. literally even had people to go to the extent that calling for a ceasefire is being labeled as anti-Semitic. Mm. To say that Palestine shall be should be free from the river to the sea, from, from tyranny, oppression, is being called anti-Semitic. So, Ustad, with your permission, on this point, we're hearing a lot of criticism regarding anti-Semitic, uh, people being anti-Semitic, people holding uh, anti-Semitic views. Are we guilty of anti-Semitism as it is being uh, proposed today? And who are the Semitic people to begin with? Um, yes, that's 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 very interesting um, because a lot of times when they say um, anti-Semitic, they are blaming actual Semites for being anti-Semitic. Mm -hmm. So historically, like if you look back at where this word Semite comes from, uh, so biblically, the the story is that um, the earth, uh, the floods came at the time of Noah, mm -hmm. and um, everyone perished except, uh, and they were not able to procreate or reproduce except for uh, the children of of Nuh or Noah. And the Quran confirms it. وَجَعَلْنَا ذُرِّيَّتَهُ هُمُ الْبَاقُونَ And we only made his progeny the ones that were left behind as in procreated. Yes. So Noah had four sons and one of his sons is called Sam. So Sam's children and their children were called Semites. So they are people who basically speak Arabic, Aramaic, Hebrew, uh, Syriac, um, Habashi. Uh, so all these are considered Semites. So the Arab people today would be considered the Arabs Semitic. are the real Semites. So and um, and our Hebrew cousins uh, were themselves Arabs. So if you look uh, at Abraham, Abraham comes from the city of Ur. Uh, Ur is a city, uh, ancient city, uh, which was located towards the end of the Euphrates, where it joins mm -hmm. uh, the Persian Gulf. So. He's an Iraqi man mm -hmm. that came from there and uh, in somewhere in the second millennia settled um, in the Holy Lands. So, and um, forgive me for yeah, that. So when he came in, um, he's a Semite himself. Mm -hmm. So all that land from Yemen all the way to uh, the ends of Syria, uh, Semites were already existing there. They already lived there. Um, they already occupied the place and when he came to Palestine um, you know in the second millennia sometimes probably uh, you know 1500 BC I would say or maybe a bit more than that when he came there already a civilization existed in Palestine um, the Bible records it as well so there's a king there called Malkizek that's Abraham used to pay taxes to and he received Abraham and paid homage to him and so on. Uh, Melchizedek in the, uh, in the Semitic languages or in the uh, you know, language of the indigenous Palestinians, so the first occupiers there, uh, the first people that lived there, is called Malaki Sadiq, uh, the righteous or truthful king. And the Bible records that Abraham paid taxes to him and met him. And Abraham came at the time just with two people, so Abraham, Sarah, and uh, Lut, or mm -hmm. Lot. So three people came to a place which was already inhabited. The Bible already mentions the names of the tribes that were there, the kingdoms that were there. It was already inhabited. Archaeological evidence uh, backs that there was findings there uh, at least 3,000 years uh, before Christ, at least 3,000 years before Christ. Um, so already a civilization existed there um, who were called Canaanites. And uh, Abraham came uh, uh, joined them, a Semite himself joined them. So those are the Semites and a special category in Palestine, like a subcategory of the Semites is called the Canaanites, a mm -hmm. uh, Kenaniyun uh, in, in Arabic. Um, and um, yeah, so using the word anti-Semites uh, for demonstrations that are designed to save the lives of actual Semites, mm -hmm. the Palestinians who are themselves Semites, mm -hmm. Uh, is is ridiculous at best because mm -hmm. uh, they are the only real se the only the only anti-Semitic act in this situation is to allow the massacre of the Palestinians and mm -hmm. as such allow the massacre of Semites. Yeah, because this is no longer phrases; these are actually like actual physical forms of violence against yeah, the Semitic yeah. people, which are the Palestinian That's people. That's right. 
Ustad, we also hear, I guess, the long-winded misconception that Muslims have long harbored anti-Semitic views. And, and f- based off of what you're saying, you know, we're already Semitic. So let's just say anti-Jewish beliefs. We have anti-Jewish uh, views and that there's always been some form of tension between Muslims and Jews. How true is this statement or is it utterly bogus? Um, no, it is, it is an unfounded statement mm-hmm. because um, Islam has uh, at no point uh, been against uh, Jews or, or any other faith as such, mm-hmm. you know. So if you look when the Prophet Sallallahu came to Medina, um, he uh, wrote the declaration or uh, the constitution of Medina mm-hmm. and in which the rights of the Jews are stipulated, the rights of the Muslims stipulated, the shared security right mm-hmm. of uh, of protecting Medina is stipulated and they lived in relative peace and harmony uh, as citizens of the same country for as long as they lived until there was, uh, you know, until there was military betrayals uh, that occurred for which there was discipline consequences um, and then if you move past that um, when Omar ibn al-Khattab first uh, came into Palestine when they surrendered the keys of the city to him um, he looked around and he said there used to be Jewish quarters in in Palestine so this is while Palestine was under under Muslim rule so it's just before that's right so what happened before um, <laughs> so Palestine's got an amazing history so before the Muslims uh, came into Palestine, the Romans were there. Yes. And the Romans initially started um, as pagans, but after Christ, they slowly converted to Christianity. And when Christianity took a grip, um, they obviously blamed the Jews for the killing of the Messiah, of Christ, um, because they believe in, mm-hmm. uh, in the crucifixion. So as a result, they punished the local Jewish population um, to the point that they had to flee and leave and there was no traces of them left in the city. Mm-hmm. Um, and when Islam came, obviously Islam doesn't believe in the crucifixion of, of Jesus. Or um, And when he came in, um, he said, where are the Jewish quarters? So they showed him a, a dump site, like a site where it was being used for rubbish. Uh, that this is where they used to live. So the Khalif uh, saw that as wrong, uh, asked for the site to be cleared and cleansed and uh, invited you know, the Jewish population to come back for visits or to stay. Uh, and in a lot of ways, he was the, he was the one that revived Jewry uh, in Palestine. And throughout Jewish history, this is well documented, including by Jewish historians, um, whenever they used to suffer persecution in the different parts of the land, mainly uh, in Christian Europe, uh, they used to take refuge with the Muslims, um, the Muslim, Muslim Khalifs and the Ottoman Khalifs later on. Um, and this is, this is historically documented. So um, we have no issues um, with Judaism as a faith, with Jews as a people. Um, and, and there were places in Muslim rule which had Jewish governors. So there's never been an issue uh, that way. Our contestation, the, the problem that we suffer currently, um, is that um, an uh, illegal land grab has happened and continues to happen, and it's illegal and cruel expansion continues today. Mm-hmm. Um, so that is the point that, that is a point of contestation and mm-hmm. it's a point that is very painful uh, to the indigenous population of Palestine and subsequently uh, to anyone that has a decent heart around the world. Mm-hmm. So you've clearly demonstrated that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had cordial relations with the Jewish people. The um, Umar bin Khattab, the, the second uh, caliph, had cordial relations with the Jewish people, inviting them back to Palestine. We see throughout Islamic history, Muslims protecting Jewish people. So where does this misconception stem from? Where does it come from? And why are people so adamant on proving this? Uh, Well, mainly from mass media. Um, And mainly, uh, so it's it's a political strategy that if you make, um, if you make the issue Um, of land grab a religious issue 
and then make it look like a persecution that um, they are being persecuted because they're Jews, um, then everyone forgets about the illegality of occupation mm -hmm. and everyone forgets about the land grab mm -hmm. and everyone forgets about expanding settlements. Uh, so it's a nice, uh, it's a nice deflective technique that, mm -hmm. that has worked pretty well. Yes.